Hi friends. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Q3 FY22 earnings call of Infobeans Technologies Limited. I will now hand over the call to Subhi Jain from Infobeans to do the formal introduction and get this earnings call start. Over to you, Subhi. Thank you, Asha. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, everyone, and th thanks for joining this Q3 earnings call for Infobeans Technologies Limited. I request this meeting is being recorded. I request all the participants to please mute their mic. The results are available on the Infobeans website. In case anyone does not have a copy of the same, please do write to us. We will be happy to send it to you. To take us through the results of this quarter and answer your questions, we have today with us Mr. Avinash Sethi, co-founder and CFO, Mr. Siddharth Sethi, co-founder and managing director. We will be starting the call with a brief overview of the company's performance and then we will follow up with a Q&A session. Any question in the chat box after the brief overview by Abhinash is over and then we will address all the questions one by one. I would like to remind you all that everything said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future which can be construed as a forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the uncertainties and risks that we face. These uncertainties and risks are included, but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus file with the SEBI and subsequent annual report, which you will find on our website. With the said note, I turn over the call to Abhinash. Over to Abhinash. Thank you, Sulbi. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for joining this call. Uh, let's start. Go to the next slide, please. So, uh, for the sake of new uh, participants, Infobeans is a digital transformation and product engineering company. We uh, create innovative software solutions for our customers to solve their complex business uh, problems. We are present across the globe uh, in uh, places like US, uh, Europe, Middle East, and India. Next, please. This is a quick glance of uh, uh, Infobeans. Uh, we are a company founded in 2000, uh, 22 years in the making, uh, 75 active clients. Uh, so far, we have a 200 client list as of now, but uh, 17 or 75 are active of those. About 1,400 people team now, uh, 10 of active Fortune 500 clients. So we have a, team, a list of 17 odd clients, but 10 are active as of today. Uh, financials of last year, uh, we did 196 crores in FY21. Fat uh, reserves, cash reserves are pretty good. And then uh, we've been growing at 43% CAGR year on year. Several awards to our, uh, you know, uh, received several, several partnerships and awards that we have received in the past. Uh, we are particularly proud of Great Place to Work, Asia's Best Employer, and Dream Companies to Work for Awards. Next, please. Uh, quick timeline uh, from 2000 to 2021. In the process, we went public in 2020, 2017, and then uh, you know migrated to NSC main board in 2019. At the same year, we acquired a company called Philosophy in the US. And then uh, in 21, we did our first buyback and also acquired a company called Internet Solution, which is a Pune-based uh, Salesforce platinum consulting partner. Next, please. These are some of the esteemed clients, uh, which are marquee names uh, Facebook, Viatech, uh, IQVIA, Ola, Inmobi, uh, some of the Indian companies as well. And then a couple of them, which are Fortune companies, Fortune 500 companies, are in India. I can't disclose the names here. But these are the, these are the customers who are uh, uh, trusting us for uh, offering them the business solutions. For their uh, regular business needs. Uh, next, please. Board of directors at Infobeans, uh, the three founders on the top, and uh, uh, Mr. Santor Muchal, Mr. Sumer Bhadar Singh, and Mrs. Shilpa Sadhu as independent directors. Uh, this is uh, particularly, I'm very proud of, and very happy, and very blessed that we have uh, a very experienced core team, and they've been with Infobeans for a very, very long time. Uh, now is the next set of founders uh, from Eternus and Philosophy who are also part of our core team. They've been helping with the strategic uh, direction of the company and 
you know, uh, executing uh, those uh, vision statement that we make uh, together next week. Uh, key indicators that we've been, uh, you know, growing in last four or five years, uh, uh, CAG of 23%, beta margins, uh, you know, in the range of 22, 25%, PAT margins, uh, you know, has been significantly uh, jumped up uh, from in FY21. Uh, CAGR of 35% on the network side, dividend payout has been held, healthy last year. So, next please. Uh, financial performance for this fiscal, uh, so this quarter, uh, we did an operating revenue of 71.6 crores, that's compared to 44.2 crores in the uh, same quarter last year. 62% uh, growth year on year and 26% growth quarter on quarter. Same goes with uh, uh, you know other parameters. We have been growing happily, uh, healthily. Uh, EBITDA has grown 22% year on year and 40% quarter on quarter. Same goes with uh, PAT, 18% on year on year and 45% quarter on quarter. So we are doing a pad of 17 crores this year as compared to almost 12 crores last, last quarter. Uh, this is a, a decent comparative between uh, Q on Q and YOY. Uh, if you look at the revenue numbers, it's 74 crores, which is the total revenue, 40% uh, up year on year and 14% up uh, quarter on quarter. A uh, pad is 18% uh, up quarter year on year and 45% up quarter on quarter. Uh, whereas another important number is uh, the QOQ uh, quarter on quarter revenue growth in US term is 27%. Next week. Uh, this is uh, an interesting data point. Uh, if you remember the first slide, we talked about revenue per fiscal 21 as 196 crores. Uh, we touched almost that number in the first nine months of this year. So pretty uh, solid uh, uh, growth here. And, uh, you know, other numbers are also in line. EBITDA is also growing well and PAG is also growing well. So here are the comparatives uh, for uh, the year ended March 21, as well as uh, the, uh, you know, QOQ and YOY actual numbers. Uh, 71 crores in revenue per operations, uh, total revenue 74 as compared to 44 and 53 uh, corresponding numbers of December 2020. Um, similarly, if you look at uh, EBITDA, it is 23 crores uh, versus 19 crores in December 20 and PAT 17 versus 14. So PAT margin uh, has dropped slightly from 27 to 23. But as I keep telling that, uh, you know, uh, we have a good margin at this point in time, but with the increasing cost uh, structure right now, uh, we will probably come down uh, on those numbers. Next, please. So, uh, you know, uh, some of the investors were seeking a breakup by geography, by business, and by segment. Uh, this time, we uh, tried to, uh, you know, bring those data points to you. Uh, if you look at the revenue by geography, it is 77% uh, comes from the US. Uh, there's a significant portion that has come up uh, because of India. And uh, uh, let me tell you, we have been working with Indian customers uh, very recently. And uh, the three prominent names that I can recall, which is uh, Baiju's, uh, and then Ola, and then Invobi, these are all three of them. Each one of them is a unicorn, and uh, they are growing very, very rapidly. So uh, India business was insignificant uh, you know, in the previous uh, year. But in this uh, quarter, this has jumped up very, very quickly to a high number. Uh, and also, you know, looking at uh, subsidies, returners in PGI, you're also contributing to the business uh, recently well. One thing to note here is returners only December month is counted here. Uh, you know, uh, it will, for all three months, it will be in the March quarter when we have all three months of returners coming to us because our acquisition happened on the 30th of November. So the consolidation number will only uh, include December as a month of this quarter. Uh, similarly, by segment, we have seen a significant jump in digital transformation business. 
So, um, you know, earlier it used to be 60 40 kind of a or 55 45 kind of a ratio. Now this has jumped to 73 percent versus 27 percent in product engineering. Mm -hmm. So, quite a change here. Next, please. So, uh, these are the growth strategies uh, that we've been following, uh, you know, year after year, and thankfully it is yielding results for us. Uh, you know, building uh, capabilities and the new technologies, uh, you know, building the growth, building the team organically, investing in our people, uh, investing in the right kind of clients and building relationships there. All of those are helping. Plus the organic uh, growth uh, through acquisitions. Uh, we've done two acquisitions so far, which is also building up uh, the momentum very, very well. Uh, this is our typical uh, IR slide where uh, We've been telling that we'll be growing, uh, we're doubling ourselves every three years. We certainly want to pass phase back further from here. And if you look at the CAGR for the last five years, these are all healthy numbers in uh, you know, uh, 26 to 35, 36% range. So quite a, another important data point here is we have a decent pipeline, which is visible for the next 12 months of over $30 million. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it on the important data points here. Uh, some of the key updates, uh, one of the Fortune 500 clients, Waste Management was uh, recently signed uh, in this quarter. Uh, there are multiple unicorns in our uh, data in our portfolio uh, from India, which is interesting. Uh, integration with Eternus is going on. Uh, philosophy is going to, is actually merged from January 1. So, uh, it will not be showing as a separate business uh, anymore from next quarter. Uh, investment continues in people and practice. And uh, another important update, uh, which is not for the last quarter, but we have onboarded 60 more branch graduates in January 2022. This is the market data as of 31st of December. Uh, next, please. Yeah, if you go to the last slide, please. So I just wanted to highlight uh, the, the pie of promoters. Uh, the promoters are uh, not diluting their shares. It is the ESOPs, which is uh, causing the dilution for everybody, including the promoters. So just wanted to highlight that fact. Next, please. Yeah, that's it. So thank you very much. Uh, we are open for questions and answers. Uh, you know, I have Siddharth also with me. Uh, so. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, please feel free to put it out, uh, and then uh, maybe the worker can coordinate uh, the, the sequence of questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Avinash. We'll start the Q&A session now. Uh, the first uh, participants, please raise your hands, whoever is having questions. Uh, first question is from Hetal Sonpal. Hetil, I have uh, unmuted you, your line. Please go ahead. Hey, hi guys! Congratulations on a great quarter. Uh, hi, man. Sir. Hey, man. How are you? <clears throat> so, my question was with regard to the uh, contribution of the uh, acquired companies. Uh, seems significant. I think it was twenty-four in the quarter out of the seventy-two crores. Yeah. Does that about, mean? Uh, about but, percent. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, organically, uh, are you also beating last year numbers? If you're not supposed to consider these numbers? Definitely, yes. Okay. So, yeah, we've been growing uh, organically as well uh, at a fast pace. Uh, I don't know if I have a number here because into means uh, itself. So, so see, one of the ways to look at it is into means and PGI are together for quite some time. Right. For us, the inorganic contribution is only eight percent right now. Mm -hmm. Right, so so that number is about six crores. Right. If I remove six crores out of seventy-four, I'm still at sixty-eight. Mm -hmm. And last year uh, I did uh, sixty-four, which is including eight crores of you know uh, other income. You are including philosophy as well when you're. Uh, philosophy is organic now, right? Oh, it's organic already. Okay, okay. Because we we acquired it in twenty nineteen. Okay. So it is organic. So inorganic component in this slide is only six crores. Right. The second point was with regard to the breakup between digital transformation and product engineering. Uh, my experience tells me product engineering is more niche, but uh, low margins. Um, is that true? 
Uh, I would say, you know, it is, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, actually uh, two ways. We have some clients where there's a low margin and then we have clients where there's good margins. So it depends on, you know, when we signed up the deal, if it was signed up at a early, let's say four, four or five years ago, the margins will have been lesser because the rate revisions cannot happen so frequently. Okay. But if it signed up well last year or, you know, in the last 24 months, the margin would have been better. So it's okay. a average value, I would say. The growth in digital transformation is because of the uh, uh, acquired company's contribution coming in, uh, which which would mean basically you're not losing clients in product engineering, but digital transformation where the company's growing. You're not losing any clients. It is okay. the growth that is happening on all sides, organic and inorganic. Got it. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Hetu. Next question comes from the line of uh, Varun Agarwal. Varun, please go ahead. I have unmuted your line. Hello. Hi, Avinash. Uh, hi, hey, Siddharth. Hey. Hi, Varun. Congratulations on the great set of numbers. Thank you. I just want you to know what are the areas in which we are looking for new acquisitions. I think uh, the acquisition strategy uh, has been well defined and we're still on that path. So uh, I, I keep sharing that, that, you know, we, there are two, there, there's an aspiration for improvements. means. Uh, the aspiration is that we want to, uh, you know, work on uh, cloud side of it, which is, uh, you know, using uh, ready platforms like ServiceNow or Salesforce. Right. And UiPath. So these are the three areas where we are looking for uh, active, uh, you know, uh, actively looking for these companies. We are also looking for user experience uh, as a specialized uh, skill set, uh, and we want to enhance our capabilities in those. So these are the aspirational areas that Incubus is very clear and very focused on. Uh, we are also very clear that we don't want to uh, go into uh, uh, you know, things like uh, product companies or SaaS companies or e-commerce companies or digital marketing companies okay. uh, or infrastructure play. We don't, we don't want to do that. So, okay. so I think, uh, I think one more area which I forgot was automation. So we are happy to, you know, go into RPA kind of companies, uh, which is UI path related companies. So, so that way uh, we, we have a very clear uh, focus areas and uh, that's where if you, if you, you know, been following your journey, it takes our time uh, to figure out the right candidate and you know, take the plunge. So we've been very choosy about where we want to go. So anything else to add to that, just to add to that, anything that would help us traverse this product engineering and digital transformation journey better, uh, that would be a good fit as a very general thumb rule. Yeah. Within that, Avinash has mentioned so many mm-hmm. other things, but those all of those things help us do uh, our existing services around product engineering and digital transformation better. Maybe a new generation of uh, technologies, maybe a expanded scope of technologies, uh, and so on. So this is the overall rationale, very high level rationale. Is blockchain included in that? Yes, blockchain is definitely included. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you so much and wish you the best for the coming quarter. Thank you to you as well. Thanks, Varun. Next question comes from the line of Nirav. Nirav, I have unmuted your your line. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. A couple of questions. One is that uh, in the organic piece, uh, you've seen very strong growth. So if you could just... uh, 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 guide us, uh, explain to us in terms of what has driven this sharp uh, revenue leap. Because over the last couple of quarters, you've grown at about, you know, in dollar terms, about the 9%, 8%. So anywhere between 75 to 9% quarter and quarter. And this quarter, if I were to exclu- exclude the Eternus acquisition, you've grown at about 14, 15%. So what would have driven this sharp uh, revenue increase and second question is regarding this new client that you've added on the waste management side if you could just uh, you know uh, explain to us in terms of uh, what uh, would be the uh, profile of work that you would be uh, doing with them thank you sure, uh, Nira, uh, you know thank you for coming on the call uh, 
I think the margin is, uh, sorry, the, the growth in revenue is primarily a factor of the demand and uh, our ability to fulfill that demand. So, uh, you know, one such example is uh, we signed up with Baiju's and within uh, three months, uh, we have, uh, you know, re increased the team size uh, very, very rapidly to take it to a, a million dollar plus run rate. So, so we have been able to go aggressive and I think I mentioned in a couple of call, last calls that uh, we are willing to uh, you know, take this uh, talent crunch battle uh, aggressively and not really worry about margins, but worry about the top line. So that strategy is playing out where we are able to grow uh, organically. Uh, plus, I think the other fact is also that the utilization levels have also increased uh, for, uh, you know, for the business. So that is helping us. Uh, Siddharth, you want to take the other question? So waste management, regarding yeah. waste management. So waste management, we are building uh, digital products for their internal consumption. So waste management, as you know, is a very big organization, Fortune 500, and present in, I think, more than 160, 70 countries in India as well. So we are trying to help them with their uh, digital transformation products, especially using .NET and some other technologies. Uh, right, and just just on the previous question, if uh, so, if we were to bifurcate the growth in the quarter between the top ten clients and others, uh, uh, so what would be that split? And going ahead, if you could, you know, uh, share that number, uh, share the split, it would be great. And sorry, one more question in terms of what would be the headcount uh, for the company at the end of the quarter? So uh, we are close to 49 people now, including Eternus. Uh, we have added, uh, uh, again, including Eternus, we have added more than uh, 300 people in the last quarter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, on the uh, split between uh, top 10, I don't have the data right now, but you know, all I can say is every other client is clamoring for uh, you know people uh, where they need a lot of work to be done. Demand is pretty high everywhere, including new clients, uh, you know, existing clients. And usually, uh, I mean, obviously this quarter might be different, but usually we, we generate 90% uh, business from the existing customers. So, uh, but yeah, point is taken. Uh, we'll note it down and we'll uh, try to give some breakup uh, in future between uh, new and existing clients. And just, just one more, uh, you, you said that you'd be adding pressures in, in the fourth quarter. Any any number in terms of what would be your net hiring in the quarter? So in the last, okay, I'll tell you. So net hiring is uh, going to be uh, close to uh, 100 plus between zero to one year or maybe about 18 months kind of a window. So this so graduates, if it's fresh graduates are 60, and we are going to add another 40 people between, uh, you know, around one year kind of experience. So, okay. so we are hiring in that band so that the bottom of the pyramid can be supported. Got that. And for Thank the you. year, for the yeah. year we targeted uh, more than uh, 200 people. Correct. Yeah. Great, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I'll, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Nero. Thanks, Nero. Uh, request to the participants, please limit to their questions so that man, uh, two per person so that management can answer all of the questions. And second uh, announcement I would like to uh, make is uh, in the chat box, whatever questions are coming, we will be taking in the last in case if time permits. So next question comes from the line of uh, B.A. Sharma. Uh, please go ahead, sir. I have unmuted your line. Sir, you need to unmute your line. Hello, Arvinash ji. Congratulations for an excellent uh, results. Thank you, sir. You've been missing uh, for last few quarters. Where are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, a uh, couple of questions were there, but uh, one or two are already answered. So, I will limit myself to only two questions now. Uh, we have a, a treasury of 129 CR as of December. And uh, I would like to understand what is the pending acquisition cost to be paid, uh, assuming all the milestones are achieved. That's number one. Number two, 
uh, what is the taxation uh, implications on the profit both at the standalone level and on the consolidated level? If you can briefly explain that. Okay, so taxation of uh, what? Taxation of uh, taxation of uh, income tax. I mean, corporate tax. Uh, uh, the profits uh, generated by Indian companies and the profit generated by the overseas companies. Okay, sorry. consolidated balance sheet, the P and L that you are showing tax. Sure, sure. So I think uh, uh, we did mention uh, during a uh, acquisition that the total cost is going to be uh, I mean, 30 crores plus 20 crores is incentive. So uh, out of that, we have paid 65 crores already. And uh, remaining is to be paid over three and a half years. Uh, the 129 crore uh, uh, balance that you see in the cash and cash equivalents includes account receivables as well. And um, the taxation part that you talked about, uh, so uh, we are evaluating that right now. Uh, so Eternus um, is, uh, you know, 100% uh, taxation uh, bracket company. Uh, InfoBeans still has a window where the, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Eternus will have to pay taxes, which is, uh, you know, all the biggest slab that a police applies to the corporates. Uh, so there would be some tax implication there, but uh, the margins are you know, more than enough to cover for that kind of a extra cost. No, in the PNL that is uh, published, the taxation comes to hardly nine and a half or ten percent of the uh, pre-tax. So how is that calculated? On what basis? That that was my question. No, so that is because of the mad entitlements that we have, or the advanced tax that we paid probably in the previous quarter, or all of those adjustments. Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we are a we are a mad. Uh, I mean, we're still a mad paying company. Okay. Uh, and I think for the next three four years, we'll still be a mad paying company. So we are in SCZ. Yeah. Yeah, you are in SCZ. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we have a new SCZ also in Chennai. Comparatively, mm-hmm. new SCZ uh, started last year, and currently also our indoor SCZ. We still enjoy some tax benefits. So what part of Indian uh, profit is going to be tax exempt? Nothing is tax exempt. I think we still have to pay MAT. Yeah. So, so what so happens MAT? is, no, no. So I'll tell you what mm-hmm. happens is uh, we have a SEG operation and we have a non-SEG operation. But the SEG operation is uh, uh, significantly large to, uh, you know, uh, still let us fall into a bracket where we have to account for MAT uh, as a taxation. So, so that is where uh, I think for next, uh, you know, three four years we are fairly covered. So I would say 25 until uh, 25 uh, we are fairly covered. 2025. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Avinash, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharma. Next question comes from the line of uh, Suresh. Uh, Suresh, please go ahead. I have unmuted your line. Suresh, you need to unmute yourself. Suresh, you, li- you need to unmute yourself from your side. I think there is some issue. We'll go to next participants. Uh, uh, next question comes from the line of Archit. Archit, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Avinash. Hi, Siddharth. Uh, a few okay. things from my side. Yeah, firstly on the margin. So, I mean, wanted to understand what led to the margin improvement this quarter, given that the industry is facing supply constraints. Uh, and with that, if you can also answer what are the sustainable margins that the company is looking at, I guess in the last call, you did mention a number of around 24%. So that's the first question. Yeah, uh, I'll stick to that 24% target. Uh, I mean, honestly, not a target. Anything more is better. Uh, I think margins improvement has happened from two fronts. One is uh, uh, philosophy has been uh, doing well. Infobeans itself is doing well because of the increased uh, demand. And I think all the businesses, even Eternals is doing well. So uh, with, with this, all you know, everywhere the, the margins are showing well because of the utilization levels increased. Uh, as well as the rate revisions uh, are also showing up uh, in some cases. Not all, but in, 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 I mean, in some cases. So, so I think it is a cumulative effect uh, that you know increase in revenue, utilization rates, 
uh, revised pricing, uh, all of those are showing up. But, uh, you know, I'm still not very confident that this will be going to sustain for long. 25% uh, is where we feel is a steady state uh, that we are comfortable with. Understood. Thanks, Avinash. Uh, second question is like, uh, there was a mention, I think in the last PPD that the company wants to double in every two years. So, I mean, uh, is that target intact? And uh, what is the company doing differently, which is going to lead to that kind of a growth? Maybe if you can also talk about what is the sales strategy? Are you expanding the sales team or maybe acquiring new clients, which will lead to that kind of a growth? Thank you. So it is a, it is a combination of two things, Archit. Uh, uh, we we are growing organically. We are investing in our organic uh, growth at various fronts. I think there's a slide that I talk about growth strategies. Uh, we've been actively pursuing that. Uh, you know, we went public in 2017, and in that uh, the first quarter, or in the RHP also, we talked about these growth strategies. We've been following those strategies, and we're seeing the results. Uh, secondly, uh, we have an active strategy where to to go inorganic also. So combination of both of these will work, and it has actually worked in the last four or five years. And we want to continue to repeat uh, what is working for us. So if you look at it, organically, we attempt to grow at around 20% year on year. Inorganically, we attempt to grow at around 25-30% year on year. Uh, that, is the, that is the ideal uh, scenario. And uh, if you look at uh, the past numbers, we've been doubling ourselves every three years for almost uh, 10 years now. So this combination is working so far for us. That's helpful, Avinash. And the last thing from my side, uh, so it seems that the client concentration is uh, a bit on a higher side. So wanted to understand how strategic is InfoBeans to these clients? And do you see a further scope of uh, wallet share gain with these clients, the existing top 10 clients, I mean? Yeah, this is uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we are extremely critical to many of these top ten clients, even Fortune clients. Uh, let me say uh, with utmost humility that uh, if we stop working for some of them, then some of their business lines might get affected. We are that critical. Uh, for the unicorns, also we are very critical. We are helping them as a strategic partner. Uh, for uh, the logistics company that we're working with, we are very critical that we cannot be replaced easily in any of these clients. And in fact, our strategy is to start off small, but then when we enter a client, we make sure that we become critical to them. To the extent that we are internal champions, that uh, if InfoBeans is doing this job, then nobody else should touch it. And uh, this is not a phenomenon of only over the past one or two years, but this has been the case for the past 15, 15 years of our journey, wherein we make a very conscious strategic effort to enter the heart of uh, any client that we work with. Having said that, we still have tremendous opportunities to grow uh, in many of these uh, uh, clients that we have because we choose our clients in such a manner where the wallet share is something that we can grab. First of all, the wallet itself has to be large. And second, the wallet share is something that we should be able to target and grab uh, over a period of one to two years. So lately, what we have been seeing is some of the um, work that we are doing, uh, we are able to get to the million dollar mark or the million dollar run rate in a few months or a couple of quarters at the most, which two or three years ago was maybe one or two years. So we have reduced that cycle as well. Thanks, Siddharth and Avinash, for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Arjit. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks, Arjit. Uh, request to the participants, please limit their questions to two per person. If time permits, we can take the follow-up questions. Next question comes from the line of Suresh. Please, uh, Suresh, please go ahead. Suresh, you need to unmute from your cell, from your end side. If it's not happening, maybe you can write it in the chat and then you just answer from the chat. Yeah. Suresh, it is not happening. Uh, we are not able to hear you. We'll go to the next participant from the line of uh, Ankit Gautam. Ankit, please go ahead. Ankit, please unmute your line. Hello. Yeah, you're audible. Hi. Hi. Hi Thank you so much. 
Hi, I'm 22 year old. I'm 22 years old, and I've been your shareholder for the past two years, and you have benefited me a lot. And this was my first share which I researched and bought. So thank you so much, and congratulations to all to growing your business this thank wonderfully. You. Glad to know that, Ankit. Glad to know that. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to know what's the attrition attrition rate this in this quarter because this industry is facing much issue in this side. And in your slide, you said that uh, you are investing a lot on each of your fresh employees and hirings, in training a lot. So, what's your spend on that, and what's your loss on attrition rate if many people are going away? And what what's your target to maintain that attrition rate? Yeah, you want to take it down. So the attrition rate, we have to look at it. Uh, and first of all, uh, it's a very good question, and the industry is facing it. But how are we tackling it? That is what the differentiator is going to be. If you go to our one of those slides where we are key team member, if you just take a closer look there, uh, when are we worried? We are worried when some of these highly experienced core team members think about leaving. But if you see here, people are with us for 14 years, 15 years, 13 years, 11, 12, 18. And more than that, this is only six that are being shown here. But ten plus is actually even much more than this. I think it goes up to two hundred, two hundred fifty people who have been with us for so long, and they are rock solid in the organization. So the attrition level there is zero, not close to zero. It is actually zero. That is something that we are extremely proud of. We are uh, facing a little bit of attrition at the bottom of the pyramid, or people who have joined in the last, you know, two years where they. Have, Not experience the culture of the organization because the offices are practically closed and there is very less person-to-person uh, -person interaction, and uh, that is where there is some sort of attrition. But we are working very hard to ensure that that attrition also is uh, under control, and uh, we are replenishing and training uh, our resources uh, very, very actively. So this is uh, something that, of course, is an area I wouldn't say of concern, but an area where we never want to lose good people. But people who do not have affinity with the organization, do not understand the culture well, have not spent a lot of time, six months or a year, and if they want to leave for a better job, a better paycheck, actually, I wouldn't say better job, but a better paycheck, that is where I would not worry too much. If they have to leave for a better paycheck, if they get a 30% jump just after six months working here, there's not much that we can do there. To to add to that, uh, we have over 300 people who have completed five years with us. Uh, that's a significant strength that we carry, uh, and uh, I think we're building on top of it. And uh, the attrition rate has increased definitely. So I mentioned last time also we are at 25 percent, which is pretty high. Uh, but that continues; it is there for everybody. Uh, so so we are building the bottom of the pyramid uh, right from fresh graduates from the college. Versus, uh, you know, hiring, uh, you know, one-year experienced people uh, and then grooming them into the new technologies that we need them for. So, plus there is a lot of uh, learning and development for the existing team uh, who are into, let's say, legacy. Uh, is, we are growing them into uh, new ones and spending on their training and all of that. So, so there is a significant investment that we are making. Uh, I wouldn't have the number on top of my mind, but it is we definitely. Uh, you know, over uh, I would say around eight to ten crores that we're spending only on training, bench. I mean, these fresh graduates and learning and development. Thank you, thank you so much. Sir. I just wanted to add two, uh, one, two, two more questions. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, how far we? Uh, uh, What do you think are, I mean, the happiest mind? Are we like, are we same like happiest mind? So in future, do you think we can get a P like happy, happiest mind, and we can be valued like happiest minds? Yes. And uh, second thing, uh, uh, first this one, and second thing, I just wanted to know that uh, we have cash of 120 crores after acquisitions, and how many acquisitions we are looking for in next financial year? We are happier than the happiest. <laughs> <laughs> so we we have cash in the bank, and uh, we are looking for acquisitions. Uh, you know, uh, there is no way I can tell you how many, uh, if any, at all. Uh, we are making our attempts. Uh, if it happens, if it happens, uh, you know, we continue to make our attempts. 
So there is no way I can tell you whether I'm going to do one or two or three, or maybe zero. I don't know. No, no issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Ankit. Next question comes from the line of Adha Arthriya. Uh, I have unmuted your line. Please go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity and congrats on the results. Uh, yeah. So uh, my first question is on your uh, capital allocation strategy. I just want to know: uh, Are there any metrics you look at when acquiring a target? You, uh, you know, maybe like an IRR or a margin target, or do you just look at uh, filling up, increasing your value proposition? Also, relating to this, uh, relating to the capital, uh, I mean, uh, the capital allocation. Uh, you've said in the past that you're not averse to uh, raising money. So would you be if if there is an acquisition in the future and you need to raise money would you raise debt or would you you know uh, dilute or dilute the shares that would be my first question is speculative so uh, okay. yeah it is dependent on so many factors uh, we we are willing to acquire companies uh, what we look at is the capabilities that they are bringing to the table uh, irr is probably the last thing in the mind as to when uh, uh, you know because numbers can change dramatically and we've seen it quarter on quarter we've seen it in the business so many times that if if you're so we believe that if the team is good and the capabilities that they're offering is good uh, they are profitable uh, you know whether they are 10% or 30% it will it, it is variable what we are looking at is the quality of the team and the capabilities and whether it is fitting in our vision or not so that is our focus um on the acquisition side uh, we are not averse to take debt uh, but only a very small amount of debt uh, secondly you know if the if the deal is attractive the size is you know we're warranting more capital to be raised we'll be doing that so it is all subjective it is hypothetical at this point in time uh, but yes uh, uh, i can tell you that we are open to uh, do uh, multiple combinations of uh, that uh, fundraise or whatever. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, so I, I just had another question. Uh, so I, I noticed that the other expenses has actually uh, reduced in the current quarter compared to the previous one. So can uh, can you just uh, elaborate on that, please? So a couple of things. Uh, I think the other expenses was a combination of uh, you know spent uh, that was done on performance bonus as well, which was a significant component. Uh, the other thing was, um, I think uh, the uh, if I look at the you don't have a bit of yeah, but on the balance sheet uh, on the P and L statement is there. So uh, uh, one other thing probably is uh, the there was a budget uh, that we uh, no no sorry not that um, performance bonus is I think is a major component that will uh, contribute uh, more than two crores two and a half crores of uh, difference between these two expenses in between these two quarters. All right. And also I noticed in your, in the last year's uh, balance sheet and the P&L, there was around uh, 10 crores of impairment uh, in the intangible assets. Uh, so uh, may I know the reason for that also? So this is a tranche that we need to uh, pay towards uh, philosophy as a last tranche, uh, which was, uh, which is due in January now. So it was, I mean, it was based on their targets, the, the fiscal ends in F- December 21. So therefore, this was a, a you know intangible asset that we are not asset. I would say it is a, a liability that you have to you know pay off uh, as a last tranche payment that to which philosophy. All right. Thank you so much. That's okay. it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of VP Rajesh. Uh, please go ahead. I have unmuted your line. Uh, thanks, Asha. Uh, congratulations, uh, Siddharth and Avinash. A great set of numbers. Thank uh, you. Just first question is just on this uh, PNL um, slide that you have. Uh, you're, you're saying total expenditure including tax and OCI. So I thought the tax will be below EBITDA, right? So am I missing something, or just the labeling is incorrect here? That's a labeling issue. Yeah, I think it is a oh. labeling issue. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. So it is the, oh. uh, yeah, it is a total expenditure uh, included. Okay. okay, and just a suggestion on this slide. 
it will be helpful if you uh, not include other income in your ebitda calculation because if you think about it right your december 22 ebitda percentage um, was much lower compared to this quarter if you take out other income and then calculate it so just a suggestion if you can start you know not putting other income as part of ebitda um, now on to my questions um, you know number one is uh, given the growth we are seeing do you have a sense how much it's coming from volume versus pricing um and and i'm just wondering if you don't have that data you know are you able to get price hikes with your clients so that'll be helpful to know yeah yeah we're able to get price hikes from the clients our new rates whenever we go to a new client are much higher than what we were charging let's say even 6 months ago uh um, mm-hmm. and uh, so volume and pricing i think both are going hand in hand right now so they, we have some pricing power and we are getting uh, work in uh, significant volume so our strategy as i said earlier was uh, as i said earlier also has been that we have to go to the heart of the patient and not stay on the fringes and that is something that we've been able to do and that has allowed us also to retain business increase business and increase our uh, our uh, rates okay and if i were to compare year over year what has been the growth in the philosophy business so philosophy is doing very well now uh, i think uh, the numbers i wouldn't have any but they on a on a quarter on quarter i mean year on year quarter comparison if i do they would probably have grown at i would say you know 30 40% uh, because uh, you know 2020 was a washout year for them and mm-hmm. and that is where i think uh, you know there is a slight uh, technical debate that i wanted to or maybe for the interest of the participant here i just wanted to highlight that fact that if you look at december 20 and september 21 on the slide right now the other income component was high in both the quarters because of the uh, government grant that we got from the us government so there was a conscious call that we took uh, as a company that we will not lay off anybody and since we didn't lay off anybody we we made losses uh, in uh, uh, in the year 2020 uh, and that is what was paid off by the government as a compensation so it is within the plan and that's where you know i tend to feel that it is more of a business uh, uh, income or a business compensation so to speak because if i were to not make those uh, and save those jobs i would have not made those losses and you know since the government has paid me only because of that now it is all squaring up in that in the sequence uh, in both the quarters so that is where you know my sense is that it is still a business uh, uh, related uh, stuff and it is okay to have a part of uh, that calculation it's not a technical thing but it is more of a business thing and so i think the the intent and the uh, fair comparison will only have when we have these two things in place i am getting that uh, yeah yeah understood understood yeah. So, uh, and i'll take it mo- i'll take it offline with you sure. um, my my second question was uh, uh, regarding this uh, uh, you know the practice areas we have uh, so are you seeing what kind of growth are you seeing in different practice areas and relatedly you know the the acquisition that we have done um, are you seeing more growth on the sales force side incrementally we are seeing a good same good growth on sales force side we are seeing good growth on service now also but uh, you know at this point in time we are not doing a practice wise uh, segregation and you know tracking that growth but on the uh, you know anecdotal uh, version is that yes we are seeing growth on uh, these practices okay and then my last question is uh, what is the percentage of revenue from fortune 500 companies and the percentage of revenue from the unicorns uh, again we don't do we that don't want to do that yeah yeah we don't do that but yeah i'll try to see if there is a significance uh, or there is a data which is of significance uh, we can right. start to share that yeah no i think i think it's important because what it highlights about our business is that for a small company that we are uh, you know we are really punching above our weight and i think it's worth highlighting that point 
Yeah, that's sure. a good point. That's a good point. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think part of it is also because of our strategy. Being a small company, it is very difficult to get into a Fortune 500 company. In fact, uh, um, it takes months, if not years, to get into one of those. Um, but if you look at our strategy, our acquisitions and our internal strategy, if you look at philosophy, it allows us, because it is a design company, it, is allow, it allows us to get into a Fortune 500 company. If you look at our uh, core competencies on cloud and digital transformation, that also allows us to give a foot in the door. For example, uh, technology like Salesforce and ServiceNow, they have been big enablers for us to get into some of these companies. And again, you would not probably not see this too much with companies our size uh, in, in this space. And this has been a conscious effort, not only during COVID, but even before COVID, all of this actually happened before COVID. So all of those strategies are now paying some good dividends. But yeah, no, no, I... I it agree is, that you are. No, yeah. Yeah, we'll start to slide and dice in those formats and try to see if we can come up with more meaningful uh, segregation here. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very impressed that you're adding Fortune 500 clients and that roster is increasing every quarter or, or the revenue from that particular client base is increasing. So congrats again and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I just want to add for the benefit of all investors, the strategy here is, to, as I said earlier, to go into uh, larger wallets. If you, I mean, this market is not going to last forever, right? This real day the red hot IT services market. But what it will help us do is if we are able to grab all of these larger clients, then when the market is not so hot, not today, but let's say two, three, four years down the line, five years down the line, we will be able to then mine these accounts and uh, it will be a much more sustainable and profitable uh, venture going forward. So this has been a very conscious effort on our side. Asha, we can go to the next participant, please. Thank We're you. We're out of time. Yeah, uh, participants, please uh, limit your questions to two. Next question comes from the line of uh, Priya. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Yeah. Uh, hi. So uh, my uh, my question is on uh, employee cost. Uh, so if if we uh, look at the employee cost on a standalone as well as a consolidated basis, uh, as a percentage of revenue, the employee cost has gone uh, much lower compared to the previous quarter. So just wanted to understand how how uh, should I see that number? Is it uh, the operating leverage kicking in or or uh, is something other thing? Or and how sustainable that thing is. So uh, you know, I think let's not worry too much about the uh, employee benefit cost uh, in in last let's say the last two quarters and the future two quarters because it is not benchmarkable. Uh, there are so many moving parts here. Uh, it is it is actually confusing us all the time. I don't want to you know further increase that burden on you. Uh, there's too many moving parts going on, right? So, yes. so I think probably two two more quarters and things should stabilize. That is when uh, there would be a better way to do it. Uh, you know, I keep seeing that employee cost is increasing. Uh, it is increasing dramatically, and um, the, a good component is also getting into contractor cost, which is you know not into employee benefit expenses uh, that you see on the sheet. So, so you know, it is a, not a valid comparison brand, to be very honest. Okay, okay. And uh, and on a standalone basis, I see there is a, a good increase in other expenses uh, compared to previous quarter or the December 20 quarter. So, uh, what is driving that uh, thing? There is an increase or a decrease? Increase. And on standalone. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think the other expenses typically will be increased because of the travel cost, because of the facility expenses, because of, uh, uh, you know, the travel started, right? So, we we have uh, people traveling across uh, the, the geographies. So, that was one primary reason. Uh, there might be a few more small reasons. Let me just quickly check if I have the data handy. Kunal, are you there online?
there are too many sheets here. Let me just check the expenses. Can this you compare to this and this is for standalone, right? You said yes, yes. I think travel is a big component. The other component is a consultancy fee for uh, returners acquisition. Then there's okay. one for uh, 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 yes, sales and business promotion is another expense which is increased. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the so it's not much of an increase, I would say. It is probably one crore or so, not much. The recruitment charges are so much these days that is also adding up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and in, in the other income side, uh, there is no uh, like uh, one time incomes. Uh, so we are done with that. <laughs> we are done with other incomes or US government grants. Or okay, 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 got it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's it for my side. Thank, Thank you. Priya. Thank you. Thanks, Priya. Next question comes from the line of Rajul. Rajul, please go ahead. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for taking my question. And I just wanted to know, like, uh, you have plans to uh, hire quite aggressively from the freshers and less experienced guys. What's the strategy you have in place to train them? Do you have, do you have any internal training capabilities or do you depend on an external provider which adds to your expenses? Okay, so we... We do both. We have internal training programs that we conduct. Uh, we also have external programs where we need expertise uh, of a particular kind, and our team is busy in delivering projects, so you know they can't afford that time. We otherwise we'll lose billable revenue. So uh, we do both. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's pretty much from my end. Thank you, brother. Asha, please move on to the next one, please. Thank you, Prajul. Next question comes from the line of Garvit. Garvit, please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is regarding the eternals. Uh, I want to ask uh, what amount uh, we can expect it to add to our top line on an annual basis. So, I, I we, we mentioned that Garvit last time. Uh, the uh, for fiscal 22, 20, sorry, fiscal 21, 22, the target was 60 crores. For 22, 23, the target is uh, 80 crores. So that is the projection they have uh, given to us, and we are going by that. Right, right. Uh, six crore for single month. That, that makes sense. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Garvit. Next question comes from the line of Rago. Rago, please go ahead. Hi, uh, I have only one question. Uh, do you have any strategy of uh, going into India tier two, tier three cities where employee cost will be less? But we have plenty of engineering colleges and talent pool, right? Because mostly they migrate into high cost centers, let's say Bangalore. Uh, so We're already in the tier two city, Indore. Uh, yeah, I know. So you have other tier two cities like Lucknow or I don't know where you have a huge population, talented people, but eventually they have to move out from their house and actually work in Bangalore. Obviously, they get paid more, but I think there is some potential which probably IT companies can leverage to further reduce their by cost, remain competitive. What are your thoughts on that? We'll definitely explore it. I mean, uh, we are always constantly looking out for good talent. In fact, we came out with an advertisement in Jaipur. Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're constantly exploring it. At this point, we are not very interested in spending money in setting up a physical office. But if we're able to get talent, then we'll definitely take it from anywhere and everywhere. In fact, we're also looking at countries like uh, Bangladesh and Philippines to uh, get talent from there. All right. Thanks. That's all from my side. All the best. Yeah. Thanks, Gaurav. Next question comes from the line of Jai Kishan. Jai Kishan, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, congratulations to a, a promoter. It's a really decent numbers the company is reporting. Uh, Thank you. 
Yeah. The question is that I just want to understand your uh, perspective in acquisition. Like, you have you set up any parameter like will acquire uh, like fifty percent of a size company? Uh, I mean, fifty, sixty crore, or we are open to acquire a company which has like the size or uh, the revenues more than us. So any uh, those kind of uh, what is your like what what you think when you acquire? On sizing perspective, revenue size. Yeah, usually uh, I think uh, you're right. Uh, the the comfort factor for us lies, uh, let's say, from 20 to 30 percent kind of range of our size. So if we if we okay. have let's say a 50 million company, we probably would like to acquire a company which is 10 to 15 million dollars. So that's the comfort. Okay, and one another question would like to ask. Uh, so what kind of service you provide to Inmobi? Because that company itself is a digital company, right? Kind of IT company. So what service you provide to them? Yeah, so uh, we provide uh, product engineering services. Okay. Okay. And uh, last question. When a company like that will will be needing help, uh, you know, in order to build. So we work with uh, Facebook also. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, last question, uh, uh, Avinash sir. You, when you say twenty-four percent sustainable margin, that include other income or it's a pure a beta margin? See, in, I, again, it is more of a technical thing, but uh, I would say it includes other income. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jaykishan. Next question comes from the line of Asit Koti. Please go ahead. Asit, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, congratulations, sir. And my question is, if you could uh, throw, uh, give us some uh, insight onto the revenue record in terms of business segments. What all business segments you are uh, servicing in the street segment? That is one. And second is in terms of uh, like AI, ML, blockchain and digital transformation so these are the major areas where you are operating supposedly in that area uh, how much do each uh, areas are contributing to your revenue so as said there is a breakup slide on the presentation uh, we don't work in iml we work in digital transformation and product engineering so that segment is already there on the slide uh, 73 percent on digital transformation and 27 percent on product engineering okay but I, I suppose AI ML uh, something has been mentioned in the slide, uh, which sure. no, we don't we don't know that. One sec, if I'm not wrong. And uh, rational for sir buying uh, buyback in April, April 21. I mean, say uh, no, not too many opportunities for acquisition were available. No, I said you didn't like it. No, it's not a question of liking it. It's something like uh, liquid cash which you have, and no, 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 if me, there are no no better opportunities available to acquire and grow business, then you go for buyback. So I said that again, this is a technical thing. We we did a buyback, uh, and then we acquired a company. Okay, so 13, 10 crores was the money that we parked for buyback because we had a good profit last year. We wanted to reward our shareholders. And uh, after that, we did a buyback. Uh, sorry, we did an acquisition in uh, November, uh, and we did. I think signed sign the term sheet somewhere around uh, July August time frame. So, so there is no such thing. Uh, uh, and again, the quantum of ten crores was too little to you know make a conclusion that there is not a good opportunity out there. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, okay. Uh, Avinash, I would like to add one more thing. We paid the dividend as well. Uh, we paid the dividend uh, after that, right? So yeah. Yeah. So that is nowhere interlinked. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Asif. Okay. Next question comes from the line of Richa Agarwal. Richa, please go ahead. We uh, Asha, we'll have to call it off. We are five minutes over our budgeted time. Uh, I'll take last question and we. Uh, thank you very, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. My question is regarding this breakup of digital transformation in product engineering. 
so uh, you know as an analyst i want to understand uh, what implication this mix has for example had it been 50 50 or 30 40 uh, what would be an ideal mix what kind of implication it could have on the overall margins honestly no idea richard okay <laughs> all right so basically wherever the industry is growing we are trying to capture the opportunities and that's the strategy is that But the right way to understand right? it it is natural right if, if there is a lot of sales force work coming in we we can do that right if there are a lot of uh customers demanding uh, uh, the services that we offer we we'll build on top of it so okay. uh, they, it i at this point in time everything is selling right right and right. sir uh, contribution of top 5 clients uh, in this quarter if you could share that number and maybe going forward you know if we could have some kind of uh, uh you yeah. know continuous representation yeah. of what kind of client so, concentration is there yeah so top 10 customers gives us more than 70% of the revenue Okay. Top five, I would say that is a forty-five percent or so. This is all right. Top of my mind. Okay. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Richa. This was the last question for today. I'll hand it back to management for uh, closing comments. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the questions have been, uh, you know, uh, pretty good, uh, and we'll try to, uh, you know, take your feedback. and uh, you know upgrade uh, the presentation and, and you know kind of information that you're seeking uh, we keep a note of uh, those things i will try to improve uh, every time thank you for staying invested uh, i was happy to note that uh, the first investment uh, that one individual made was very in for me i'm happy uh, that he was here we were able to talk to them feel free to you know uh, reach out to us through investor relationship uh, portal on the website uh, there is a email that you must have got uh, you can respond to email address mentioned in that email itself uh, feel free to be in touch uh, i look forward for your continued support thank you very much thank you very much everyone appreciate it thank you everyone please take care and stay safe this ends the call thanks bye